In a previous video I showed you how to get the data and um, in the tracker program this is data for a tennis ball falling and uh, how to get that data over into Excel. In this video I'm going to show you how to use Excel to uh, try to interpret that data and see if we can use it to find an acceleration due to gravity. Here I was randomly called by the tracker program mass A. You could call that whatever you wanted. But what you can see here is that we have time data, and that time is in seconds, and we have X data, and that's a little bit misleading because that's actually um, Y data, and it assumed that it was starting from an origin and then falling away from the origin, and so this is this would actually be, um, I guess all of these values should be negative. What we're going to do is we're just going to leave them alone, and then we're going to recognize when we finally get to the point where we've interpreted our graph that the acceleration that it's going to give us in that graph won't be negative as we expect it to be. It'll be positive, and that's just because of the way our tracker program was set up. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to adjust those times, time in seconds. Here, I'm starting at a time of 1.57 seconds. If you recall the video, didn't the tennis ball didn't drop at the instant the video started. It dropped at a slightly different time. So this 1.57 is really when the motion starts. It's more logical in my mind at least to say that we want to reset that to time zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our current time, that's what's listed in A3, and we're going to subtract away what we consider to be our beginning time. The easy way to do that in Excel is to say take the cell A3 and subtract away the cell A money sign 3. The money sign tells Excel that as you scroll from uh, cell to cell, which I'm going to do in a second, change this one, change the A3, but don't change the A money sign 3. It uses that A money sign 3 to say fix it in that location. So A3 minus A3 is obviously 0, but what we get in this next cell is A4 minus A3 still. See, it hasn't changed that value because of that money sign. I can go all the way up to A19, and it says A19 minus A3. Again, the money sign keeps it fixed in space. Now, in this, if I really wanted this as Y data, I guess, I guess since I'm doing this, I might as well adjust it. I wasn't going to, but I might as well. If I consider this to be my starting position, um, and then I allow this object to fall from this location, then what I can do again is I can reset this to zero. This my uh, reset it to zero by saying subtract um, that minus the new position. I don't want a three. I want b three there. Yeah, because those are b's right from b. And by doing it in this order, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get negative values for y instead of positive values for y. Uh, who didn't like that? What doesn't like about that? B16, 1.39. Um, huh, it's putting in uh, that funny symbol, but in the meantime, oh, that's what it is. It just the, the column was too short, so I just lengthened it up, and you can see it better there. Anyways, what you can see here is that my uh, I've changed it so that it, I'm treating it as if if this was zero and it was increasing here I've made this zero and it's decreasing or it's falling away into negative positions. Now if I highlight those two columns and I go to insert in physics we always want to use scatter plots. I know the line graph looks sort of the same but what we have is we have X and Y data the line graph is going to treat it as if you have two sets of Y data and then plot it as one two three four that's not what we want. We want to use this as our x and this as our y. So we want to make sure we're using scatter. So there you go. Um, I don't like the title it gave me here. I'm going to rename this to tennis ball falling or something like that. So that it hopefully has some sort of relationship to what it's actually doing. And we can see the tennis ball starts slowly and falls faster and faster and faster. So this is nice. Now a couple things. If I click on this data and I right click on it, then what I can see is I've got a few options here. One is select data. If I click on that, I can see, and I go edit, I can see where it's taking the values for the X's and Y's. 
if the graph didn't already look exactly like I wanted to look, I would go in here and say, what did you put on X and what did you put on Y? But since it, it, it's already correct, I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, if I wanted to add different series, if I wanted more than one things on the same graph, I could go add here. And then once I add that series, I can go ahead and say, use these X values, use these Y values, and give it a name. I don't actually want to bother because I only really want one series right now, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, and that made it unhappy for a second there, but now it's okay. Uh, I do want to make sure that I'm adding proper um, labels to my axes. If I go up here under layout, I can see that I can add a chart title or axes titles. Horizontal title on this, for example, should be um, time in seconds. I'm not in love with where it put it there. I wonder if I can just drag it right up there. That's better. And if I want an axis title for the vertical, don't rotate it so it's going up and down or anything like that. Put it horizontally like this. And this is the position. Uh, in meters. So there it is. Now the last thing I want to do here is, th is if this represents acceleration due to gravity then we know the formula for that is that the displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. What's important about that is that the relationship between position and time is a quadratic t squared. So if I click on the data and right click go to add trend line then when I'm looking at all these trend lines I can choose a polynomial of order 2 or quadratic I want to see what the equation for that quadratic is and I might as well see what the r squared value is while I'm here so I'm just gonna slide that up here I'm gonna move the title a little bit so I can see it and what I've got for this data is an acceler a acceleration of or a x squared term of 4.9677x squared minus 0 0.4761 uh, and then plus some 0 0.0097 that just acts as the initial position. Um, so that's the equation. If I think about this a little bit carefully I can recognize that y here is my displacement or I'm sorry not my displacement my position. So my position is equal to one half a t squared, so x is like t because this doesn't know that it's t on the x-axis, minus v1t plus the initial position. So that'll give me my displacement. Um, so what we're really interested in here is this number right here. It is an acceleration directly because if you recall in the formula I said it's one half of acceleration. So that's one half of what we predict as acceleration due to gravity. While we're here, why don't we go ahead and see what that actually means then. The value is 4.9677, and I'm going to multiply it by 2. So according to this, I'm getting an acceleration due to gravity with my video of 9.93. Uh, we know that the acceleration due to gravity in the real world is 9.8. That's pretty darn good for dropping a tennis ball and recording it in a video. Um, there's going to be a, another video in a second on how to use that number to come up with percent error. Uh, but other than that, we should be, um, you should be able to do this now on your own.